In the arenas of Hell exists a creature that is literally there to be a combatant. More beasts than sentient, they are responsible for guarding the most sensitive points of Hell and do quite a good job at it. Their ferocity in combat is owed to their size and strength, but also to, and I'm not even joking, their time spent in the arenas fighting and eating any other creature that was thrown into the pit with them. So get behind Doomslayer and try not to get ripped apart as we cover the lore and morphology of the Hell Knight from Doom 2016. So to kick off off this video, let's see what the UAC has to say about the horrors they discovered to get an idea of the attacks and strengths of this creature that it's going to possess. The Hell Knight is a towering brute built for combat deep within the bowels of Hell. These diabolical beasts are the prized gladiators of the Demon Horde. They relentlessly stomp towards their target, smashing their massive fists into the ground to create shockwaves that stagger their opponents and leave them vulnerable to bone-crushing melee attacks. The Hell Knight's powerful legs allow them to leap large distances effortlessly Effortlessly, quickly closing the gap on the enemy. This creature is nothing to joke about. They are legitimately going to be the Knights of Hell. The fact is, a human coming into contact with such a beast would instantly be ripped apart. The demon is indeed going to be quite a hulking behemoth. The Doomslayer stands at roughly 6 feet tall or 1.82 meters, which means that the Hell Knight will stand upwards of over 10 feet tall or 3 meters. Possibly in the future, I smell a Sanghealy vs. Hell Knight video coming up. Anyhow, this creature's height is not going to be the only thing that makes it intimidating. The weight of this particular beast is going to be somewhere within the range of 700 to 1,000 pounds, or 317.5 to about 453 kilograms, accounting for its muscle mass. The reason this range is so high is that I don't believe anybody has actually ever gotten a Hell Knight on a scale. What I find most interesting is the agility is still going to be quite high even with its overall stature. So with this generalized view of the creature set up, let's get into the morphological characteristics as they are going to explain quite a bit about how it's able to move and fight the way it does. Starting with the feet per usual, we can see that this creature appears to be quite animalistic. The foot is going to be very large in comparison with the rest of the body, providing very sturdy footing during combat. It is also more than that though. The foot is a mass of bone, muscle, and claws. The muscle and bone are going to provide very powerful points of contact, working in conjunction with the rest of the leg, allowing the creature to leap great distances and fall without bone snapping or injury to the foot in general. Compared with a normal human foot, I would put these bones at probably a minimum of three times greater the density, leading to them virtually being unbreakable by normal means. The claws exist in fives on each foot and are going to be several inches long. This can be used to slash at enemies, completely eviscerating them. Humans are not going to be much of a target when it comes to this creature, as we are pretty much tissue paper, but these claws are designed to rip apart other hell knights and demons. The legs are once again going to be digitigrade, but also they're going to be reduced ridiculously muscular. Take a dog leg, but inject straight up steroids into its life throughout its entire life, and that's going to be the Hell Knight's legs. The muscle has a purpose, however. The amount of muscle attached to the skeletal frame allows it to run incomprehensibly fast, but also maintain its agility. Almost immediately, the Hell Knight can use its muscular legs to stop several hundred pounds of momentum and turn direction, making it highly lethal in combat. What is interesting, however, is going to be around the back of the creature, you can see how thick the bones are that comprise the leg. What is technically a heel of this creature is going to give you an idea of kind of the circumference of the bones running through the actual leg itself. To me, these bones are going to be more than likely thicker than your entire forearm. Again, this bone strength is going to make it virtually unbreakable by normal means and falls would not have too much of an impact unless it was from several hundred feet or perhaps several hundred meters for the rest of the world. And they say Americans aren't self-aware. Moving to the hip region, we begin to see some natural occurring armor plating. This will protect the joints of the hips from slashes and damage as if there wasn't armor plating there, a lost leg would lead to massive bleed out and we can see the hips are lined with a material that flays outwards towards the interior portions of the arms. This armor plating exists in a few areas but for the hips it protects the outer portion of the body and to some degree the arteries and veins that are going to supply the leg muscles with blood. Moving up the abdomen region and thoracic area we can see more examples of this natural armor plating, but on the posterior of this beast, it appears to be absent. The abdomen area is going to have the abdominal muscles protected, but what can only be assumed to be chitinous material. It interconnects, forming a solid layer with the lower belly region of the armor coming to a point. Moving up the pectoral region, we can see that this layering exists to cover the rib cage. Plating it's kind of difficult, but it appears almost that if you like put shoulder pads on for football, you have your rib cage protecting your organs, and then you have that extra layer of protection protecting your ribs. Same 
idea for the demon. This extra layer will more than likely protect it from the slashing effects of the claws of other Hell Knights. Moving around to the back, the armoring is not going to be present. What is going to be present is some serious hashtag goals concerning weightlifting. Almost bursting through the skin exists a ridiculously muscular creature. I imagine in the area no armor exists as it would inhibit movement of the body. The reasoning for that is that the muscle is so large due to the fact that it needs it for its ground pound. When the Hell Knight leaps and smacks the ground, this is going to involve using the back muscles to transfer the power, something the Hell Knight does quite well. The trapezius muscles almost make the thing look hunched over, but in reality, this is just how large the muscle is. They are going to provide stability for the neck and protection for the back of the head in certain instances of attack. The shoulders are going to contain some minor armor padding as the gray area is going to continue on. The shoulders themselves are going to be very large, but considering this is a point of constant movement, the armor is going to not be as thick as it is on the chest region. The shoulders, however, are going to be strong enough to lift humans off the ground quite easily. The shoulders continue into the biceps and triceps, with the triceps exhibiting the same characteristics of the back, basically being very large again, adding to the transfer of power to the ground pound. The forearms and hands themselves are going to be much larger than the, that of the proportions of a human, almost seeming more ape-like. Here the natural armor is going to be fairly pronounced. Lighting the forearms entirely, the arm is almost going to appear at least 1.5 times the size of the upper arm. The hands themselves are quite large and sport three fingers and one opposable thumb, perfect for grasping and tearing apart humans. On each finger is going to exist a razor sharp claw, which is going to probably be much more functional and tearing apart a human's internal organs as opposed to the feet, which is just going to be more slashing. The hands are also, surprise surprise, very muscular leading to a very solid and tight grip. Did you know that some people refer to the demons as aliens? Because coming to the head I could definitely see it. The lower jaw is very interesting as apparently nothing decays in hell. The lower jaw is going to appear very fleshy and kind of exposed, as in the bone itself is exposed. No skin covering the mouth is going to be present, and interestingly enough, the teeth are not going to be very sharp. The canines themselves are sharp, but overall, they are actually going to appear very human-like, suggesting that the creature is an omnivore, if you can actually believe that. The jaw juts out to the side with exposed bone existing. What is pretty cool is it almost looks like there is a double connection point that exists on the skull attaching the jaw. Moving up to the nose, it is going to be completely gone. Almost like a human skull, a triangular opening exists but no sign of a nose. Typically where the eyes would sit is going to be nothing but smooth skull. Well, presumably skull, it could just be the skin color. The eyes have migrated to the outer edges of the skull and are quite dark and beady. Overall, the head is just a bucket of ugly with proportions that would make you think that this thing is just really going to be a buff alien. What is kind of funny is some people actually refer to the Hell Knight as just a really buff imp. It too uses the flames to attack opponents, but mostly just as a shockwave which causes splash damage rather than firing at the person. So I'm not really too sure about the evolution of an imp, but maybe they start making those gains and then they become a Hell Knight. The question remains, however, why is this creature structured the way it is? I touched on the arenas earlier, but according to the lore, tablets retrieved from the Great Step in the UAC automated survey of 2143 suggests that the Hell Knights originally flanked the Great Serpent during the First Age. After their masters were defeated by the Guardians, the Hell Knights were placed in the arenas of Hell, where they would feed on any victims thrown to them by their demon overlords as sport. It is now believed that they guard the most sacred and important relics of the netherworld. Internally, the Hell Knight is something I would love to get a good look at, but I'm also pretty sure that I would end up like that one scientist who just gets completely ripped apart, so maybe have some better safety protocols in place. <laughs> but it's clear by the amount of muscle on the frame of this creature that the bones are going to be quite large, but not only that, the tendons and ligaments would have to be overhauled as well. Leaping requires quite a bit of strain on the ligaments in the leg, which indicates to me they must exist as almost like steel cables inside this creature. Not legitimately steel cables, but something pretty close in strength and tensile strength especially. The bones themselves, more so in the arm, would have to be astronomically strong as the ground pound is... Well, concerning what we know about action and reaction, this would send the same amount of force through the body, which would injure the Hell Knight if its body could not absorb this shock. This ground pound has the ability to send soldiers staggering backwards, which gives the Hell Knight time to close the gap and use its ridiculous strength to tear them limb from limb. To harp on the fact that the Hell Knight really are just mostly bone and muscle, there are really only a few ways that the Doom Slayer can take out a Hell Knight, at least hand to hand, but they are pretty much all going to involve attacking the weak points. No arm pulls, no cracking a head open, just straight up vulnerable areas. When attacking a knight for a glory kill, the kills are going to revolve mostly around snapping the neck or completely dismembering 
grabbing the jaw. The Doomslayer will grab the head, twisting the neck, completely taking the creature out, and the other way, he will punch or knee the jaw and just completely remove it from the skull. Considering the two connection points on the side of the head, I would imagine that this would also crack the skull, possibly leading to the hemorrhaging of the creature and even slicing or completely severing of the veins and arteries supplying blood to its brain. If you are so unlucky that the demon gets a hold of you, things are over pretty quickly. The Hell Knight prefers the quick and dirty method of the good old head stomp. It will rear up, bringing its massive foot down on your skull, completely smashing your helmet and face in, leading to the death of the Doom Slayer. So that is going to about wrap up the Hell Knight. This is a creature that is ridiculously muscular and quite bony as an organism that is not to be taken lightly and for good reason. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, liking helps get the video out there to other people and subscribing and hitting the notification bell helps you stay up to date when I post stuff, which if you like this then you'll probably like some of the other topics I've covered. I will drop my Discord, Twitter, and Patreon links in the description and speaking of Patreon, I would like to thank my patrons. First up, we have our scientists, they are going to be Layla Lizarin, and then of course there's Master BC, and then we have a Lorantis, and then our newcomer Bowen Goodwin. Next up, our residents are going to be Richard Muhlenberg, G. Anderson, and Miscellaneous Militaria. Our geneticists are going to be Andrew Lawson, Divine Whisper, John Russo, Laffy No Skill, and Steve N. Holding it down with their Masters in Biology, we have Adam Hartswick, Brian H. Briggs, Cameron Smith, Cody G. Rice, Javier D. Rodriguez, Scott Grant, and the Otter Man. And last but not least, with their Bachelors in Morphological Sciences, we have Ahigal Comics, got it right that time, Alex the Gun Guy, Average Soul, Captain Gas Mask, Dustin Ellis, Eric Scott Gillies, Joseph Radical, One Tired Slob, and Professor Binips, I believe. Yes, Binips. Thank you guys for your continued support. Patron is going to be the best way to support this channel if you find yourself liking the content. But apart from that, I want to thank you guys for watching my video over the Hell Night. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see y'all in the next one.